Hello everybody, welcome back to another Batania tutorial. In today's tutorial, we'll be having a look at this setup behind me. This is a completely automated Raflausia setup. And if you guys are wondering, the Raflausia is the uh, flower that'll eat the passive flowers. So you can see, there's a day bloom behind me. It gets put down on the ground, gets eaten, and creates more mana. So let's get to it. Alright, so now that we're getting started with this tutorial, I want to quickly explain something that this is not going to be me building the full thing because this is quite a quite a design here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just switch this off by taking out this sand around here and you'll see in a few seconds this should all stop. Last one gets made, placed down, and then we can continue without that noise. Now, to make this a bit more easy to explain, I've kind of separated this into a few modules, and the reason for that is, as I say, it's really difficult to get it, to <laughs> explain it without breaking it apart, and it can be made a lot smaller than this, so bear that in mind, and if you did want to give it a go and compact it, go for it. Now, what we'll do is we'll go through each module, kind of a module, I guess, of what is going on here. So, each of these three there, there, and there, are the flower kind of the ingredient dispensers let's call them now what they've got is they've got three droppers on this one here three droppers on this one here and three droppers on that one there all for the different ingredients being the petals and for this one over here the mana powder so what this will do is we'll create our first our nightshades over here the nightshades have got their inputs on each of those there and their double input being the black mystical petals in that dropper there. The droppers are facing into this open crate and every time they get a redstone signal on them, so we've got the redstone over there, we've got those ones on top of the droppers, they will drop those petals. And those petals will be dropped down there and taken by the spectranthium or spectranthemum to the block above here. And the way you do that with that block above here is for instance take any block, place it above there, you can take your normal one of the forest, shift right click on the spectranthemum Shift right click on the block just like you would normally bind that to a mana pool and because it's already bound you can see it's not letting me bind it to that one but it is actually bound there so don't worry about that. You can see actually when I looked over it right there that it was bound. So we'll go back to that, break those two blocks so that they're out of the way. This one over here is a little bit different to this one over here and this one over here. So if you want to just take this one in, we've got the mana detectors on top of that with the force relays on top of the mana detectors. And we got the redstone dust on that one there because we needed two inputs over there for the two black petals. As I say, this one's a bit different. And to check this one out, we've got ourselves our mana detector there. And that is where our mana powder is. And that one will only go off once, obviously. These ones here, we've got two mana detectors. And that's because we need two of each of these. So we need two cyan petals and two blue petals. They are also on the droppers, which are facing into this open crate, just like that one there. And that one's just a little bit different. So that's the layout we got going on there. Nothing too complicated. If you do have any troubles with force relays, I would recommend having a look at the video, which should be on screen now. If not, it will be down in the description, which is a whole video explaining force relays. And I'm sure you will get the hang of it and see how everything's going. But if not, we will go through how to connect this particular one in this tutorial as well. This one over here is exactly a mirror image of that one over there, just with the different ingredients. So if you can get that one right, you should be able to get that one right. Now, around here is the next module sort of thing. And this is what's going to be filling up our buckets of water for the Petal Apothecary. It's a bit of a uh, compact design, this, and I've got a tutorial explaining it, but I think we could probably do... A bit of a better better job just showing you here. So we've got our sticky piston facing down with a block of redstone, which stops this water bucket in here. Then we've also got a dispenser, and that's actually facing up into these blocks over here. And that has got a infinite water source above it. So you can see there's a block of water there, a block of water on top of the sticky piston, and every time that empty bucket takes water from there, it'll keep refilling the water and keep refilling the bucket. Then also, when this sticky piston with the redstone block goes away, it'll allow this bucket to move on and the bucket from there to move down into here. So it'll just keep going around in circles. Also, over here, we have got ourselves a dropper with a bunch of seeds in them facing into this open crate, which is also the same open crate that the buckets of water are going to be dropping through. 
There's also a Spectranthemum, and this one is in the exact same spot as where those ones are all connected to, the one block above the Petal Apothecary. And I think that's pretty much the water situation explained, and I will get to how it's all connected up to be automatic now, which is where these mana detectors and everything are. So what I've done is I've decided that I want the mana burst to come through here and set off this dispenser first. So that'll go through there, set up the dispenser, and then I'm going to right click and then right click here. And what I've done there is I've taken whatever's going to be coming into here, whichever mana burst is coming into there, which sets that dispenser off to fill up the bucket of water. Then we've got this one coming over here to give us a redstone pulse, and that will allow that bucket of water to fall through. And also, by the way, this one over here dispenses the seeds. So two things in one there. And as I say, the bucket of water will drop down. Then we can also go here, right click on that one, and we just want to make that at the end of every single one of these things. You'll see what I mean now. We'll just right click on that and that will return whatever mana is made, whatever mana is left over to this fabulous mana pool and it is fabulous. And what we're going to do now is we'll go through to these ones here. So this one over here will be for the day blooms. We'll right click on that, go around to our first input. Now it's not really important on these which one's your first input so we'll do that. Take that one to there, that one to there, that one to there, that one, to this little piece that we just set up, there, and now what will happen is every time that goes through, it should give us a normal mana pulse through that area there, so we'll just do this, you can see it goes through all of those, gives us all of those, finishes up, and drops everything we need there into a day bloom. So that is actually completely functional the way we've just done that there. What we've also got here is the floating Ranancarpus on top of this block here to plant the flower. And then we've got our floating Raflausia over there to eat the flower. And then obviously just the mana spreader. I think that's pretty simple. I don't think there's too much explanation for the others. We've done the exact same thing. So all we've done is we've placed that mana spreader, pulse mana spreader, into that force relay. And we've done it for that one. Done it for that one on the next one there. And then I guess the explanation will be how do we get these force relays to work the way we want them with what lens of course. So the lens we are using is a resistance warp lens. So you can see there composite mana lens resistance warp and that one allows the mana burst to travel just slow enough to set every single one of these off perfectly every time. You could try with just a normal warp lens but that tends to give a few problems for me at least so give it a try for yourself. Let me know if that one does make a difference but I find that helps to make sure this farm does work 100%. The next thing now is the timing on these, and that is a little bit of a tricky one. So what we'll do is we'll just clear, clear out our inventory a little bit, and I'll show you a little trick to what I'm doing at least. I'm using 21 seconds between each of these. So we'll do this, take one stack of sand, which just coincidentally comes to 21 if you put it across three blocks. We also want seven of these, so we go seven. I've just kind of messed that up, so we'll just have to fix that up again. So we'll just do those. And we'll have to clear that out, go to 21, and that should be all right now. The next thing we'll want to do is take ourselves another hovering hourglass, which is a little bit of a trick here to make sure we get these all in the right time. So we'll put seven in there, and that seven is going to be the gap that we want between each and every one of these working. So we'll go every time. There we go, that one just went off. We'll put 21 seconds in there. Whatever number you put in here, times it by three, and put it in each of these. So that one goes again, we put that in there. And then the last one now, we'll wait for these. And then we'll do the exact same thing over there. It was just a little bit off. It shouldn't make too much of a problem. And you can see now everything should work after the next seven seconds. So first one's made. That's the day bloom. Everything should fall down there. They all get picked up there, placed down there, and it should get eaten up. Now, I've tried with a few others. The seven second difference does make the, the whole thing work just perfectly. There you have it. If you do have any troubles, there is a world download in the description. So just click that link. You should be able to check it out, see what's going on here. Also, if you do have any troubles with the automation of the petals or the mana powder, which is right below me there, they, they are relatively easy to automate. And if you do have any troubles, we probably will be going through them in my Let's Play series when I do eventually make this farm. So maybe stick around, check that out. Also, if you do have any other things you would like to try, for instance, putting this connected to a corporea system, that would also be pretty easy to do, and I do have tutorials in the description for you to check them out. Maybe give that a try. 
Thank you very much, guys. And I'll see you next time.